أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. It says in سورة الأحزاب بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها النبي إن أرسلناك شاهدا ومبشرا ونذيرا وداعيا إلى الله بإذنه وسراجا منيرا صدق الله العظيم In English the meaning is God is talking to the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, saying Prophet we have sent you as a witness a herald of good news and a warner and as someone who invites to God with his permission and as a radiant son. Now, these days we remember the birth of the Prophet Muhammad. For this occasion, there are many stories for children, there are poems that are recited, describing his parents, his childhood, his birth, his uh, being brought up as an orphan in Mecca, events from his later life, and descriptions of his high state as the final messenger. This is not like the festival of the breaking of the fast after Ramadan, or the festival of the sacrifice, that both have specific fixed prayers and customs. Rather, it is an occasion to remember the Prophet's life, what he taught us, and what he means for us. After all, he is our most important teacher. And many of his experiences contain a lesson for our own lives. Like he was known as an honest businessman, then most other people are too interested in wealth to care. That would be an important example for our own days. Or he had the courage to remind the powerful people of God's justice and their responsibility and to warn them of the consequences of selfishness, injustice and cruelty. Of course, they didn't like it. But still, it's something that is very relevant for us today. Similarly, from his very early age, he was committed to social justice and the rights of the poor. And another central point is that he taught God's unity and human responsibility in contrast to the oppressive multitude of deities and religious authorities. Then, most important, he gave men and women new hope by reminding them of God's loving kindness and the blessings that goes with being a helpful, ethical person. We learned from him, from his experience of having to leave one's home and relatives and property because of persecution. And we learned from him about making peace between fighting groups of people and to work for reconciliation the way he did it in Medina. And from his everyday life, we get an idea of respect for elders, kindness to young ones, loyalty to friends, correctness in business, self-control, and justice with enemies. Muslims express their love and respect for the Prophet Muhammad in various ways. Prayers for blessings on him and his family and companions are a regular part of ritual prayer every day, five times. With all the love that Muslims feel, it is important to remember that Muhammad is a human being, and that's exactly what it makes it so important for us. As a human being, he is able to understand and to be an example for human beings, not like an angel who would be uh, maybe perfect, huh? may be brilliant, may be impressive, but an angel would not understand our everyday challenges and our everyday lives. 
But as the Quran points out, Muhammad وسلم, it says it's not, he is not the father of any of you. That is, we should not relate to him like children, but as mature Muslims who know what responsibility is implied in following him. He was sent, as we have heard, as a witness, a herald of good, good news, as a warner, and as someone who invites to God with his permission and a radiant son that can help us with our orientation if we open our, our own eyes. We are to learn both from his teaching and his example thoughtfully and mindfully. He is the seal of the prophets, both in the sense that he completed what we need to know in order to prepare our mind for the life in our complex world. And he is the seal of prophets in the sense that he is the seal of approval that confirms earlier messengers as true prophetic teachers. How would we otherwise know? Idealizing the prophet beyond the reasonable fondness and respect can prevent us from having access to the human example and the support we need. Keeping in mind that he was sent as a mercy for the world should give us a perspective for implementing what he taught and what we learned in a meaningful way to promote mercy and peace in our society. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen.